Hi guys, so this video here is taken from a full course on building a track from scratch in Logic. You'll be able to watch all of the Logic related videos for the course on YouTube. There will be a link to the playlist below for you. But in this course, we're basically building this whole track from scratch. If you want to follow along with that you can and if you want to download the project file and all the samples that go with the course there's a link to that in the description as well i hope this video is useful to you and that you're able to follow along with the course let's jump into it Okay, so while we thought about it, let's try the vocal tape delay effect that I'm thinking that we're going to use in this section here. And as with everything in this, the ideas aren't always necessarily going to be final, but this is what I'm feeling is going to help fill it out. And it's a really cool technique to show you. So I'm going to take the middle vocal here because I think that's what's going to be most useful to us. So this part just here, what we want to do is have it play across this section, but we're going to take a little part of it just to keep it rolling through. But I can't see your view. Now we're not going to cut the sample up or anything like that. We're going to use some automation using one of Logic's plugins. So when we go into delay, there's one called tape delay. And this is really useful because we can control the feedback in great detail and we can push the feedback beyond 100%. That's really important here. We're going to really be making use of that. Uh, I think one over four is probably going to work about right for us. I'm going to try and capture this last phrase with it like that. So what we need to do is firstly, we're going to modulate the feedback. So what we need to do firstly, we need to make sure dry is back at 100%. Wet at 30% will probably be okay, but we can adjust it later if need be. Now we are going to modulate this feedback. So let's make sure we've got our automation lanes on. Where it says volume here, we're going to go to tape delay and feedback. Now over this last phrase just here, we're going to need to put some points in. So we can have this be off the entire time and then when it comes to here we need to kind of feed it in a little bit let's just hear how long this lasts at 85% okay so that's good so at the end of about here it's still going what we need to do then is just start ramping up the percentage beyond 100 now this can very quickly get out of control so work at a low level or even put a limiter on the channel because it can distort very quickly. Okay, so it's going to get out of control about here. And there we're going to start bringing that back down to sort of the 100 range. have it maintained like that pretty much as long as we want and we can bring it out around here now the trick is to make sure it's still nicely audible in the track actually a little bit loud so what we can do now is bring the wet percentage down to something like 25 instead play it back and keep adjusting that balance actually want to fade off a little bit sooner than that so we're going to bring this back and just dial this back to sort of 80 so it's got a bit of a slope happening here and I don't want it to get quite as loud as it was so it goes to 126 we're going to bring that back down to say 120 and the 122 here going to bring that down even further say 110 that should hopefully give us our balance oh something else we need to do is make sure it's not in at the start either we don't want it all the time we're just creating this effect here Just 
nicely sat in the background now. It just helps fill that space, just a little something in the background. Now, when we EQ and compress, it is going to adjust, or we can just bring that plugin further down in the chain. The automation is going to stay linked to it. So we can really play around with that. But that's the idea that I was after, uh, and just having a little something else in there. Now, when listening through to this section of the track, the piano starts to become a little bit more repetitive, not in necessarily the melody. The melody sits nicely, but it becomes obvious that it's, uh, it's MIDI, and it's almost the same thing happening over over and over again. So what I'm going to start doing is blocking things out in sections and joining things like the melodies together. So if we select all of these, we now press T and G. When we tap them again, they're all going to join together. And now we can work on that section all in one block. To get back to the point tool, we just tap T twice. Now we can double click on here or press E and we've got all of the information for this whole section of piano. As we can see, the chords very, very much are all the same level, all starting at exactly the same time. There's no real fluctuation going on there at all. And that's why it becomes a little bit static. So we're going to really play around in here and try and adjust this, especially where there's no vocals. So in this section here, I want it to become far more of a, a feeling a performance part. So we're going to use a similar trick as before. We're going to highlight just the chords here. We're going to into functions, do MIDI transform. We're going to humanize, but I'm just going to humanize the velocity. I don't want the position to change. So over here, this needs to come to zero and the length doesn't really need to change either. We're going to bring that to zero and about 10% change overall in velocity should be okay. And that should open up the chords a little bit more for us. Now what I'm going to do now is have it so the chords gradually build up in level. So we're going to take this first one and take it a little bit lower. We can see they actually build up quite nicely already. Maybe have a tiny bit up on here. And I'm not going to have it so, you know, every note is louder than the last, but just so the average goes up throughout this passage. I think that's just going to be a nice little way of building up and giving some feeling in it. And it won't be too obvious over that length of time either. So that works really nicely. It's really subtle, but it builds up and changes. Let's try it out in context. I think that works really, really nicely, actually. And we're going to keep doing things like that as we go throughout this whole project. So let's loop this section now, quite a predominant section in the track for us. And let's see how we feel about it. Okay, so something I heard that doesn't exist, which is sort of what I say when I feel there could be something different there, um, I kind of I hear it and have the idea, is just to double up the chord just before that second vocal comes in. It doesn't happen all the time, but what we want is it perhaps to happen just here. Um, so let's see, the vocal lands just here. I think we're going to have a short chord and then make this one land again. So we could do it really easily with, by just going T and I. Uh, zooming in and we could just cut the chord like this. Now that's going to be a little bit rigid. So let's end this chord slightly early. And we're going to stagger it just a little bit. This might not even really be audible, but it always comes into the feeling of it. And we'll just change these start times just the tiniest amount so it feels like a natural chord coming in and let's see if that idea worked
Yeah, definitely. However, I want to make it quite a bit softer. Brilliant. And we're going to humanize it again. We're going to use pretty much the same technique just to move those velocities around slightly. Our settings should reset. We'll do that. Operate only. It should be a nice soft chord now that lands with the vocal. And I'm actually going to shorten these three notes up. I'm going to have it so it really rolls in as well. And that might be the only time that happens in the track, but it's just that little significant change. Let's have a listen through again, see if there's anything else we want to keep changing. Okay, so this time when these main vocal sections come in here, the melody starting to get a little bit lost. Now, instead of tackling that with what EQ or compression, we can quite simply find the right section uh, and we can just give our melody in this part a little bit more oomph. We can just bring it up like this and make it really part of it. Again, we can do the same thing. I think again, we can do the same thing with the chords, but we're, we're going to give them a bit of humanization and then we're going to bring them all up in level for this whole section from here. So we're going to go functions, MIDI transform and do our little humanized trick. Make sure we don't change the position or the length, operate only. And we're going to bring everything up to that louder chord that we had before. But for the last four chords, these ones just here, I'm actually going to bring those up even further. We really grow into kind of a crescendo and we're going to bring the melody up so it's among them as well. Good, let's move on to the next section and keep developing this project until we can play it back and it's really enjoyable to listen through the entire track. Something I do want to say is obviously I'm working in this section here and we kind of repeat again towards the end. I will likely do some really subtle changes so they're not identical copy and paste sections. Um, it's obviously different now, but we can make it even bigger and more of a crescendo in the second section. Let's see how we go with it. <laughs> 